a major issue that I see is happening in these universities is that they've fallen into the trap that was mentioned in the internationalization literature and they're seeing the means of internationalization as the goal. In other words, right now, universities seem to be fulfilling the brief that uh, MEXT has set out for them, where they are offering enough courses in English. Students can graduate for, you know, taking classes for four years entirely in English, but it's kind of as far as it goes. Um, the courses that the students can take are oftentimes kind of ad hoc. Like the core courses, perhaps they've been carefully thought out and uh, taught by um, you know, professors that realize the point of the program and what they're teaching. But then the elective courses are often taught by faculty members who merely volunteered to teach a course because they want to practice their own English, they want to get the benefits from teaching an international course, or there's not that many people in the university that feel comfortable enough teaching English. Or if they didn't volunteer themselves, the elective courses are often taught by uh, faculty members who were volunteered by their superiors. Um, I heard that quite a bit in my interviews for my PhD. And so the result of that is there's a Students can take all of their courses in English, but they're not really taking a coherent program. Um, and they don't have the opportunity to really specialize in the topics that interests them. Uh, you know, for example, they're taking classes on you know, the Japanese economy and flower arranging. And it's like, how does that fit together? Um, so there seems to me to be a lack of focus on the program outcomes. The goal is still being to create a program entirely in English, rather than nurturing the students and you know preparing them for a global workplace. I mean, of course, I'm generalising. This is not the case in every institution, and I'm looking specifically at three institutions um, in, that are taking part in the Global 30 project. But it's a tendency that I'm observing more often than not, and. Um, Administrators and faculty members who were involved in implementing these programs, or at least the ones who were involved in initially designing the programs, um, they hope that the English taught programs at the universities will catalyze a change across the wider university. However, not much is being done to actually achieve that. Um, a recurring complaint from international students enrolled in those English taught programs is that they don't have much opportunity for interaction with the Japanese students. They can take classes with the domestic students, they're all in there together, but you've got the international students usually sitting at the front of the classroom, the Japanese students sitting at the back. Again, generalization, but I've heard it from more than one person. And, <laughs> and um, the Japanese students are having tendencies to view the international students as short-term exchange students. The Japanese students are still not quite aware that these international students are at their institutions for four years and they're real students. Um, sort of, um, universities are just sort of hoping that the internationalization will just happen, magically happen, because of the presence of international students on campus. Um, more work needs to be done to integrate these students into the framework of the university if it is to incite a wider change. And um, another barrier to inciting a broader change um, in the university rests with the small numbers of international students that are currently admitted into English core programs. And I went to a presentation earlier today at Ryosoka University, and they have a cap of 10 students on their program, which makes it sort of a little bit easier to manage, maybe. But and it's at first, yeah. It, all, all well and good, but it needs to grow in order to you know, have an impact on the rest of the university. And I've noticed, I think it's a tendency at um, national universities and also the private universities to have this kind of cap. Um, national universities still see their goal as primarily you know, educating domestic students, and so there's kind of a little bit of, well, we don't want to 
give our well sought after places away to international students. So the, the numbers are capped more tightly um, than I've observed at private institutions. Um, I'm wor I worry that we're seeing similar tendencies in other internationalization programs at Japanese universities too. Uh, for example, the Go Global Japan project um, still seems to be focusing on numbers of students who study abroad. And I realize that is a first step. First of all, we do have to encourage our students to go overseas. But at the same time, we need to be encouraging our, our departments to think about what are we doing with these students once they have been overseas. Things still seem to be a little bit separate. Um, this morning in the presentation about um, English medium instruction, we have the lack of communication and the very sort of um, siloed uh, position of different departments at universities. And so students are they're going abroad, and that's it, they've been abroad now, yeah, they're international. Now they're coming back and taking just the regular class, and nobody's doing anything with those skills that the students are learning. So um, I kind of want to end it there and say, well, that's the stage where I think we're at right now. These projects have been running for a few years, and I think it's time that universities sort of stopped, took stock of what they've achieved so far in terms of implementing new programs, encouraging students to study abroad. And now they should think about why are we implementing these programs? What are the outcomes and the skills that we want our students to have? And how are we going to make sure that you know, when students participate in these programs, they are going to actually gain skills and use these skills. So, thank you very much. Thank you.